Hello, my name is Neil Baum. I'm a urologist in New Orleans, and I would like to take a few moments to talk with you about urinary incontinence. And in this second video, I will discuss how the diagnosis is made and what are the treatment options for urinary incontinence. The diagnosis is made by a careful history, a physical exam, a few screening tests, and a few urologic evaluation. The screening test consists of a bladder diary where you record the amount of fluid consumed, the amount of fluid that you urinate, and when you have problems of incontinence. You also will need a urinalysis, a few blood tests, uh, particularly a calcium and glucose test to rule out diabetes. The urologic evaluation consists of a cystometrogram or a urodynamic evaluation to evaluate the bladder and the urethra, and occasionally a cystoscopy is required, which is a look into the bladder with a lighted tube. The treatment of urinary incontinence consists of behavior techniques, medications, mechanical devices, and surgery. Behavior techniques consist of retraining the bladder or improving the muscle tone in the pelvis with the use of Kegel exercises, which is the contraction and relaxation of the pelvic floor muscles. Behavior therapy is inexpensive and usually is helpful for mild stress incontinence. The disadvantage is it requires a high level of motivation and usually changes do not occur for three to six months. Also, these exercises have to be performed for the person's entire lifetime. Other treatment options include drug therapy, which are bladder relaxants and estrogen. Bladder relaxants can be given, which are easy to use. They're relatively inexpensive, and it is most effective for urge, incontinence, or overactive bladder. The disadvantages that requires continuous use of the medication and there are side effects of the medication consisting of dry mouth, rarely constipation, and rarely blurred vision. Estrogens, particularly topical estrogens, are used for stress and urge incontinence in postmenopausal women. It restores the blood supply to the lining of the vagina and the urethra. It can be given by either Premarin tablets or cream applied topically to the vagina or the urethra, but estrogen is contraindicated in women who have had breast cancer. Mechanical devices are also a treatment option for women who have prolapse or relaxation of the supporting structures of the bladder and the urethra. These mechanical devices are inexpensive they are painless and easily inserted, but the disadvantage is that it must be worn continuously and must be removed periodically to clean and for good hygiene. Finally, there are surgical procedures, particularly for women who have stress incontinence. And this procedure usually returns the bladder and the urethra to its normal anatomical position. There are two types of surgery. One is an open surgical procedure. One of the more common procedures performed today is the tension-free vaginal tape. The tension-free vaginal tape has the advantage is it is very effective for stress urinary incontinence. The procedure can be performed in the hospital under local or general anesthetic in 20 to 30 minutes and the results are immediate. The advantages of the vaginal tape is that most women require no pain medication after the procedure. It has an 80 to 85 percent success rate 
and the disadvantage is that the recovery period is one to two days after the procedure, and most women can resume all activities, including sexual intimacy, four to six weeks after the procedure. In summary, urinary incontinence is a common condition that affects millions of American men and women. Help is available. Urinary incontinence can easily be evaluated by your physician, usually in one or two visits. And treatment options consist of exercises, medications, mechanical devices, and surgery to help restore bladder control. I hope you have found this video useful and helpful. If you would like more information, please go to my website, www.neobaum.com.